Georgia has uh, taken out Auburn in the annual grudge match. The South's oldest rivalry did that fairly easily. Now they've got a date uh, with Mississippi State coming into Athens. we got Anthony Dasher on the line. Of course, Anthony writes for UGA Sports. That's on Rival. So please check out Anthony's work right there. Anthony, how you doing today? How you doing? Good, Mark. All right. Uh, the Auburn game, 31-13. It was pretty much a business-like, workman-like effort. I'm not going to say that they just completely stomped them into the ground, but based on what I saw, uh, never really a threat. Uh, pretty mm -hmm. much controlled the game top to bottom. For for you, what would be the highs and the lows of uh, the uh, effort against Auburn? Well, you know, like you said, workman like would be a good way to put it. I and mean, I think I might have described it as a grind. Uh, I mean, nothing pretty by any stretch. But, you know, they still, like you said, it's a rivalry game. Uh, they still won by 18 points. So, I mean, I, Kirby Smart, I know, uh, very pleased with that. And, and while, well, yes, there are always going to be some areas they need to improve. And, you know, first half issues, again, kind of kind of bit them a little bit. But all they did score 14 points, which is the most they've done in a game against an F FPS opponent in the first half, you know, so, so far this year. But, you know, overall, they made some good strides and got a, got a good win. We're in the middle of an SEC season where we've seen Tennessee lose as a two-touchdown favorite. Bama lose as a three-plus touchdown favorite. Mm -hmm. Ole Miss was close to a three-touchdown favorite against Kentucky. Of course, Kentucky almost took down Georgia. So, And we just got started with this conference. So it might be a little bit more topsy-turvy than we anticipated. Well, I don't think anybody uh, would have expected what happened uh, you know, last weekend, which is one of the nuttier weekends I've seen in SEC play ever. I mean, I know, I know nobody figured, you know, that it was going to be in Alabama the first time in forever. And, uh, and really, you know, Arkansas, the job they did against Tennessee, Tennessee's all, we're supposed to have this great, you know, again, and they, they do, they don't get me wrong. They've got a great offense, but they couldn't get it done against Arkansas on this particular night. So uh, it just shows again, the parody as something that coach smart talks about all the time. Uh, you just don't know in this league, especially on the road. He's always harping on how difficult it can be to win away from your home stadium, and last week certainly proved his point. And we didn't even mention, uh, nobody really surprised that Missouri lost to Texas A&M. But yeah. the way they did, though, the margin yeah. of things, I think surprised a lot of folks. Yeah, getting wiped out in that game yeah. as well. Uh, really, no Georgia games ha have been like the Alabama game in that the defense exposed, or maybe it was just, you know, I kind of chalked it up to, you know, just being one of those games. That one, it's, it goes – one way and obviously the defense cleaned it up in the second half while it was a tale of two halves completely uh were there defensive takeaways from that game because certainly we didn't see it against kentucky and we did not see it against auburn but they may not be the teams that can capitalize on uh, a team's defensive woes but uh any issues that you would be concerned about going forward against better teams and obviously a date to Texas uh, here pretty soon. You know, there were some missed tackles. They've had some trouble missed tackles in certain, certain games. Sure. I think they had 15 against Alabama they had 15 missed tackles against uh, Kentucky. And you mentioned that first half against Alabama, Alabama was just, I was as good as I've seen them look offensively in a long time. I and mean, they had the two best uh, players on the field with Jalen Milrow and Ryan uh, Williams. But you mentioned the second half though, Georgia made some adjustments uh, and, uh, and really, Pretty much, I won't say stoned. They didn't do that because they obviously came back and won the game. But they played a lot more, had a lot more success. Uh, you know, holding holding Alabama what ten points, wherever it was there in the in, in the second half, and uh, and that's kind of what they were hoping they can able to you know you know continue you know moving forward. Uh, you know, last week against Auburn again, Auburn's you know Auburn's got a got a got, got a good offense. I mean, nothing spectacular. I mean, you know, Peyton Thorne uh, has had some issues in, in past games. Although again, he did not turn the ball over you know once. Uh, here in Athens uh, the other day, but you know it's, it's still basically the same defense they had last year, same 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 people, same players. Uh, maybe not forcing as many turnovers, but they do have more sacks this year than they did this time last year. So it's still a work in progress, just like everything else is. Got Anthony Dasher on the line from UGA Sports on Rivals. Check out his work this week as uh, the dogs prepare to take on the dogs. Of course, it's that uh, Mississippi State Georgia game that uh, has the dogs taking on the dogs. So Mississippi State, has, uh, speaking of Vandy, has taken over Vandy's spot as the worst team in the league. I don't think there's any question about that. Mm -hmm. So what can we really take from this game that you're, you're looking to see if there's been improvement or development? Well, it's like I was kind of alluding to earlier. I want to see uh, 
said, Jordan, get off to a better start, Ben, uh, having more rhythm offensively to start games. Again, which is something we have not, you know, really seen yet, you know, this year. Uh, otherwise, you know, Mississippi State's going to have a hard time. A true freshman quarterback is going to be playing in Sanford Stadium. Uh, you know, that's going to be tough on, on anybody, I would I would think. But I think Georgia just wants to try to get, like I said, just get their offense going just a little bit, have more rhythm, be more explosive. Because, again, next week is the big one, you know, down in uh, – and Austin against Texas, and they want to go into that game on a high note. Folks, please like the video and subscribe right here at the Voice of College Football, uh, whether it be on the SEC channel or the Georgia channel, and check out all the other SEC team channels that uh, that uh, we have offered for you. All right, uh, does any of this uh, uh, tie into uh, where recruiting stands right now? Uh, is there anything? I know that this is a slow time in that department. But uh, as Kirby Smart likes to remind us, uh, recruiting never stops. Is, is, the, is there any news out there, any potential uh, announcements? No, not quite yet. Uh, you know, that is going to be a big weekend though, uh, as far as recruits coming in. Uh, you know, Elijah what Griffin, I believe his name is, a five-star from down in Savannah, Savannah Christian, is going to be here on a, on, on a visit. they got some other key defensive players, you know, they're looking at and hoping to, hoping to get. But like you said, right now it's kind of a, kind of a slow time. Uh, everybody's getting their commitments a lot earlier now than what they used to. And, uh, and you, know, you know, Georgia did get a commitment this past weekend from Krumah, the running back from uh, down in Lee County, Georgia. Uh, I don't want to butcher his first name. As you saw me, I think it's how it pronounces. I don't want to, I don't want to you know, do that to the young man. But you know, they're they're, they're doing well. I think they're ranked number number five in rivals rankings right now. And, and I suspect by the time uh, you know get some of these other kids that are really focused, on, I think they'll be up around the top of the country. Yeah, I see that uh, out of Leesburg, Georgia. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, Usami Chroma, yep. 6205. Rated a top 10 running back across the board, it appears, uh, for most mm -hmm. of these services. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, had to go quite down the list uh, when it's Georgia, <laughs> even for a top 10 running back. He's like he's yeah. like 12th on the uh, the commitment list for 2025, but a uh, uh, heck of a player, apparently. So, we will be looking out for him. All right, uh, Anthony, we would be remiss if we didn't ex uh, at least address this Kobe Young situation. Mm -hmm. I don't know that there's a lot to say because it's obviously in the hands of the authorities. Mm -hmm. uh, Kobe Young, wide receiver, of course, transferred in from Miami, hit three catches against Auburn for 51 yards, 11 catches this year, a couple touchdowns, and misdemeanor charges for battery and assault of an unborn child, which it's a bit ironic that that would be the phrasing in a sense. But, um, yeah, Kirby Smart made a statement today. I don't know if there's much that you can you can add to to that. Oh, he's he's been suspended. I mean, uh, you know, definitely until uh, you know the results of uh, whatever takes place with him or you know happen until it's uh, determined. So again, it's just it's a, a regrettable you know thing on, in all you know all ways, shape, or form. And I asked Coach Smart yesterday at his uh, post practice press conference. Again, it's just like with the driving issue. They bring speakers in and, and the stuff about the domestic violence is something they harp on more than anything. But again, you just some, you know, again, I don't, I, I'm not going to say, I, I hate to sit there and say innocent guilty guy because we don't know, really don't know yet, but even for players to put, find themselves, put themselves in this position, it's, it's difficult because, uh, you know, they're, they're told, they're taught, you know, you know, not to do this kind of thing. They actually bring in special speakers. They actually have role playing. Like, what would you do if this person did that? And that the whole team is involved. Uh, but uh, again, some of the stuff just just uh, you know keeps happening. This is the second type of this, uh, you know, kind of kind of similar to the Ra Ra Thomas, you know, incident, you know, a couple of months ago that has happened, you know, since uh, you know since spring practices it was uh, completed. And that's something you just don't don't need to see. I mean, um, I commend Coach Moore for actually coming out and announcing right away that he's suspended. I think that's uh, been one criticism of Kirby, you know, over some of these. Uh, recent you know these, these past rests they've been very tight-lipped about what they're doing some of them so i think at least half at least shows you know that that kind of stuff won't be tolerated if you, you commit the crime you're not gonna you're not gonna be able to feel yeah we've had the conversations with you anthony about the the driving incidents that are just such a strange category of issues that keep coming up over and over and over and over uh over the course of the last what's almost been with let's see mm -hmm. two years at this point and then now uh I don't want to incorrectly cite the number. I did see a number uh, in some report about the number of players who have been arrested uh, in the program in the last couple of years. And it was yeah. 
a fairly high it's number. Seven, I think seven cents more. I do want to say something though that a lot of people do not realize about the city of Athens, Clark County, Georgia. Uh, in Athens, they have a, a free public online jail report. You can find every single person free. You know, they just have to just Google Athens, Clark County Jail, and you'll get a list of every single person arrested in Clark County, whether it be shoplifted or murder. Other cities, Tuscaloosa, for example, as a ton Atlanta, you cannot just Google jail report and find a list of, uh, of individuals who have been incarcerated. And I think that's one reason why you're seeing, you know, so many more Georgia kids because the media, myself included, can go on and just go down that list and say who's been arrested. Uh, if, if you don't have access to an online jail report, then the only way you're going to know if, if something happened to somebody, if it was like a major crime or somebody, you know, kind of kind of tips you off. So I don't think it's the case that George kids are just that much worse than kids from other schools. I just think uh, some of it, again, it's no excuse. This, this stuff shouldn't be happening at all. But I think some of it, a good bit of it, has to do with uh, the media just doesn't have the kind of access to people who get in trouble that they do in Athens. It's a valid point. Absolutely. We don't want to step out of bounds in regards to uh, criticism of this. Yes, it's to be taken very seriously, but sure. at the same time, innocent until proven guilty. These are charges. And then also... Sometimes some things get attention, other things that are just as severe don't get attention. It just happens to be where it happened, when it happened, who found out, what kind of influence that they have to be able to, to, to share it. All those things uh, come into play uh, in terms of how much recognition and how much notice these various issues get. So that's a good point. All right, Anthony, we appreciate you being here. Sure. Enjoy the game on Saturday, and we'll uh, track you down for Texas Talk uh, next week. All right, we'll see you.